Good afternoon, everybody. I'm PC Outcast, and we are back with more of Ambition, a Minuet and Power. And as a quick recap of the party, uh, the choir, uh, choir, choir recital, um, we obviously lost a little bit of novelty on our provincial dress, I believe. Uh, we gained credibility. We're up to, now up to 35. Lost a bit of favor with Ludovico, Ludovico, whatever, Ludovico. And we gained some cheap church gossip. Sadly, we didn't get any of the uh, higher level gossip because some of that was looking pretty good. Some shocking gossip and some powerful gossip and bold gossip and whatever. Anyway, moving on with our cheap gossip. 27th of Mars. Ah, uh, more opportunities to go to places. The Duchess Anne, uh, you Uve? Uves? Uves? I think it's U-Z-E-S, or Z if you're American. Requests the attendance of Yvette Dico to their military ball on the 4th of April. This intimate party is sure to be the most spectacular display of merry gaiety. Uh, attending this party will give you a level of exhaustion. Yes. Uh, this is on the 4th. Fourth, and we already have something on the third and something on the fifth. Yeah, we should probably decline so that we can uh, we can rest in between. Unfortunately. Okay, how are we doing for exhaustion? One, not too bad. Let's see about. Ooh got all kinds of things. Minions and misdirection. You come across the hirelings of one of your earliest enemies, but what are they up to? Outrageous crown gossip. 5 to 15 peril. Outrageous revolution gossip. Okay, that's there. Not everyone visiting Paris has the wry subtlety that you've grown used to. Some are far more blunt. However, that's not always a bad thing. Credibility, shocking military gossip, shocking revolution gossip, and more shocking military gossip, and more shocking revolution gossip. Okay. Music to your ears. Down by the water you come across an unusual man of many talents. A chance conversation that may hold the power to subtly alter the future. Credibility. Home. Out in the suburbs of Paris, Gonguet Gon Gon Paradi is a rendezvous location that's the perfect spot for drinking, dancing, and cabaret entertainment. Okay, we can go and sell stuff, but I think I want to maybe do one of these other things first. Waking near the market, you come across your own maid of all works. Maid of all works? Who seems to be in a bit of trouble. There's possibly a little bit of money, credibility, and peril. I'm going to go for this and try and get some, some juicy gossip. You decide to spend the day wandering the Fountain Square, as it's a warm day and plenty of people will congregate there, which usually means good place for finding information. Perhaps you'll be able to find something that Pierre would find valuable. You survey the area and everyone here already looks like they have someone to talk to, which is concerning. Approaching a stranger is easy. Approaching a group of them by yourself is far more daunting. Curse the audacity of these strangers. How dare they have friends? You spot a man who has just taken a seat by himself at the table of a nearby cafe. He spread out a great sheet of paper and weighed down the corners with empty saucers. You approach him, but he doesn't acknowledge you at first, and appears totally lost in this document. From the looks of it, it's some kind of diagram or blueprint, but the exact details are lost on you. Oh, bonjour, madame. Yeah, says without looking up. His accent is foreign, but you're unable to place it. It sounds either Austrian or Hungarian. Um... Trying to find... channel, channel my inner Austrian. I'm terrible with German and Austrian uh, accents, and probably even worse with Hungarian. 
My name is Christoph. If that's what you're going to ask, what business? What business is it that you have here? Oh, I'm just indulging in curiosity. What are you doing? Hmm. Right now, I am studying a 400-year-old church and determine to determine why it hasn't fallen down, despite a complete lack of renovations in the last 100 years. The priest has insisted to me that this is a miracle, but I can't imagine the Lord using miracles to reward a century of shoddy maintenance. Yeah, probably not. He gestures to the chair across from him. Please, take a seat. You do so and settle in, finally feeling a little bit more comfortable in the situation. You've gained a little credibility. Without taking his eyes off the document, he waves over a waitress and orders you some coffee. When it arrives, you take a sip. It is coffee, sweet, strong, and hot. It's also quite invigorating. You've lost a level of exhaustion. Awesome. Judging from your in your interest in the affairs of strangers, I imagine you also have a thirst for gossip, yes? While this is true, you're not sure if he had you're not sure if he had to put it quite so cynically. To that end, would you prefer to learn something interesting about the military or the revolution? Uh Hmm. The military. I, I have no idea what this word is. Tell me what you know about the military. Hmm, I suspect that he says, here's what I've learned. It spends the next few minutes detailing some gossip concerning the military. It's certainly an interesting story, but something about the whole exchange feels rather untoward. Without the pretense of intrigue, it seems so heartless and mercantile. Now, oh, you've lost... You've gotten a piece of shocking military gossip, but lost credibility. Oh, that's a shame. The two of you talk for a little longer, but the conversation eventually winds down. He pauses to check his pocket watch and says, I'm sorry, but I must head to the Bastille. If I'm to study it, I will need to do so before I lose the sunlight. And I completely lost the accent as well. A revoir? A revoir, madame? He says before he packs up all of his materials and drops some coins on the table for your respective refreshments. He departs and you decide to leave as well before it gets too dark. Interesting. Very, very interesting. The next morning you find a letter on your nightstand. Camille must have brought it in while you were still asleep. It's sealed with a rich purple wax seal uh, bearing the initials HG. Opening it up, you find a letter from Honorad, written in flowing cursive. It might be your imagination, but you think you can smell the slightest hint of perfume in the letter. Sheer, sheer evet? Is that dear? Let me know in the comments. It was truly, uh, it was truly a pleasure to have your company in the to, in the ride home from that otherwise dreary party. Still, I see that the thought that our host was allowed to ridicule you in front of all those people, no less. Such a thing must not go unpunished. This is why I'm digging in some rather dark corners of the city. I have some information that you will find quite interesting. Onrod goes on to describe a particular fountain deep in the city. She'd like to meet with you in secret as she's worried about someone intercepting the letter. Is your enemy really that powerful? Onrod's clue is now available to visit in the Paris map. Please meet me there as soon as you can and I sh I'll share what I've learned. B something on the rod. Using your map, it doesn't take long to figure out where this particular fountain is. In fact, you could visit it today if you like. I would like to sell my stuff, though. Mm. Uh, can I? Where, where was I able to examine the gossip I have? There we go. 
Two days old, still fresh, 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 one day old. Oh, we got lots of stuff. It's still fresh. So maybe we can get away with selling it in two days. It's gonna it's gonna drop down in yeah, hmm. Okay, let's take a look at her thing. We need to go to a what is this? A wine tasting. mainly going to be with the bourgeois which I still have not, I forgot again to look up this word I'm just never going to remember that am I uh yeah so that's the wine tasting and then we have like several days we get several days to do stuff and now it's going to it's going to burn through two more days but I guess we get we got to test the stuff out right let's go ahead and meet up with Anurad. Madame Gazelle has invited you to meet her here so that you might discuss what she's learned while researching your hated foe the Viscountess Marseille Marcel de Foy. yeah let's go ahead and do that you leave the house earlier than usual that morning, uncertain of how long it'll take you to walk to the fountain that Anurad mentioned in her letter to you. Given that you're still new to Skullduggery, you decided to dress in darker clothes and stick to comfortable walking shoes. Surprisingly enough, you managed to find the fountain without getting turned around. It seems like the perfect place for a meeting like this. There's just enough people wandering around that you won't draw attention, but also few enough that you'll be able to find somewhere secluded to talk. Looking around, you can't spot Ma Madame Gazelle anywhere, so you decide to take a seat at the edge of, a f of the fountain. It makes sense to be visible enough that she'll be able to find you without any flashy, flashy waving or signaling. You get comfortable, smooth out your skirts, and pause for a moment to reflect on the decisions that led you to a point in your life where you're having secret rendezvous, rendezvous with a glamorous widow to learn the secrets of your most hated enemies. If anything, they must have been some good decisions. After only a few minutes of waiting by the fountain, Anurad's carriage pulls up and Rene, Anurad's trusted coachman, steps down off of his box to open the door for her. In the middle of the day, but the inside of the luxuriously decorated carriage is still shrouded in gloom. Anurad steps down from the carriage. Bonjour, vet. I hope you haven't been waiting long. Please, step inside. I would rather not share this information while in public. But are you sure this carriage is, uh, you know, like, discreet? Madame Gazelle laughs with, the, with an unexpected snort. I assure... I'm sure that it's not. However, anyone who wishes to spy upon us already knows who we are. The very least we can do is discuss this in a place where they can't listen in. <sighs> Besides, this dress is silk, and I'm not going to risk falling into a fountain with it, with it on. She concludes, and... Or, sorry, continues and offers her hand to you. Judging from her tone, you get the feeling that disagreeing with her logic won't get you anywhere. You have lost credibility. You take her hand and get into the carriage. As with, as with before, it takes a few moments for your eyes to adjust to the oppressive gloom within. Madame Gazelle follows you inside and takes up her normal seat across from you with a silent signal to Renee and the carriage takes off. She sips at her glass of water and spends a few mo moments simply looking at me, looking you over, not really sure what she's looking for. After a while, she seems satisfied and continues, Since you are here, I'll uh, assume you that you read my letter. It's possible that you're more forgiving than myself, but the thought of what happened to you that night still makes me livid. It, at first, I admittedly knew very little about Marcel, but the more I, lear I started learning about her, the less I liked. Now that I've gotten to know her better, I'm not surprised at all that she would be so contemptible. So, I did what anyone else would do. I held meetings with as many of her business partners as I could, claiming to be interested in investing in my husband, investing my husband's fortune. They, of course, fell all over themselves in order to meet with me and try to part me from my late husband's money. During those meetings, 
I asked about Marcel's family investments and pretended to be very impressed with whatever they told me. However, in that whole time, I couldn't find evidence that any of her family's investments were older than 30 years or so. Hmm. Huh. 30 years is a long time for a single person, but that's not how the aristocratic families see the world. The Gazelle family's fortune is 40 years old, and we're still derided as new money. Honorod pauses to sip her water and sneer at some unseen adversary. As if recent success was something, was something to be ashamed of. To put it simply, why would her family pretend their fortune is older than it really is? That gaudy wretch is hiding something about her money. Knowing what she's like in public, anything she wants to hide must be dark indeed. Hmm. You know, it sounds like he may be right. What now? Huh. Now? Now, you pursue this lead, Ache plan, and let your and get your revenge. What that requires is really up to you. I'm more than happy to provide you with information, but I think you'd be better served if you handle the rest yourself. Keep in mind, if you're going to bring about her ruin, the best time to do so would be April 24th, the night of her birthday masquerade. Madame Gazelle chuckles to herself at the thought. It's her birthday, so she'll make every effort to keep all of the attention on herself, which means that any damaging revelations you happen to bring to light will be impossible to ignore. Of course, to do this, you'll need to find both evidence and an invitation. Of course, you could always just give up, but I don't think that sort of thing suits you. Madame Gazelle signals Renee and the co uh, coach begins to roll to a stop. Pulling back the curtains for a moment, you realize that you're already outside your home. Ah, while we must unfortunately part ways, Anurad gets uh, says as Renee, is, Renee opens the door, I wish you the best of luck in your quest for vengeance. She helps you down from the carriage, and with a crack of Renee's whip, her carriage departs and winds its way into the city. You stop to think about this new information. Marcel is a wealthy aristocrat, but her fortune appears to be younger than she claims. It seems like this knowledge could be useful, but you'll have to dig deeper first. Researching Marcel is now available to visit in the Paris map. With that, you begin to plan your next move and also stroke your invisible beard evilly. As you plan your next move against your sworn enemy. If you're going to bring Marcel to ruin, you'll have to be ready by April 24th. And here we are, March 29th. You wake up to the sound of someone knocking on your door downstairs. Before you can even get up, you hear Camille cheerily call out, I'll get it! <laughs> uh, when she answers the door, you hear her spend a minute talking with a man whose harsh voice you don't recognize. When their conversation finishes, Camille heads up to your room. <clears throat> Madame, we need to talk about the rent and my wages. Ugh. Do we have to? Money is such a bore. <sighs> well, yes. Uh, we must, Madame. Camille replies awkwardly. The grumpy man downstairs was our landlord. While we're paid up on our rent through the week, we'll need to make sure there's enough for next week. While we didn't uh, get to pay him this week, but next week, we didn't need to pay him this week, but next week, we need to have 35 francs. I'm going to say, I don't know how to pronounce this. Livars? Li livers? We need livers. We, can we really pal can we pay in livers like the livers of our enemies for our rent and five livers for my wages or we could be in trouble or more specifically you you will now need to pay both your rent and the wages of your servants every week or deal with damage to your credibility or perhaps even peril okay so i think she said 35 or 40 Hmm. Yes. Is there anything else, madame? 
Yeah, uh, why exactly am I paying you five dollars a week? <laughs> oh, so many things, madame. I get groceries, cook your food, clean the house, clean your outfits, help you get dressed, and get rid of vermin. Camille continues to happily list off her various responsibilities around the house until it starts to give you a headache. Eventually, you give up on even the possibility of renegotiating your pay and simply wave her away. With that, Camille heads downstairs to make your breakfast. And you're left to wonder how you'll take care of this. Okay, does it list somewhere how much we need to pay and when? Oh, today's the night of the party, too. somewhere else I can see this information? No, the answer. Okay, good, good talk. Now, do I need to prepare? Oh yeah, I just have to prepare for the party. I can't actually do anything else um, other than sort of look at information. We've got some gossip. It's three days old. It's still considered fresh. I'm, I'm kind of doing this as a test to see how long stuff t stays fresh. Okay, so we're going to go back to this outfit. As your carriage nears the party, you consider taking one last moment to assess your preparations. No, that's fine. You brush off the notion and step out of your carriage. You already know what rumors to listen for and what advantages you already have at your disposal. Credibility up. Your choice of outfit has altered your credibility. Your level of restedness has not altered your credibility. You've gained a piece of cheap bourgeois, bourgeois, bourgeois gossip right off the bat. Fabulous. Um, your servant checks your invitation, a servant checks, and everything seems to be in order. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do a gift. <gasps> oh, they... boy. Uh, she gratefully uh, takes the gift from you and sets it aside. As you enter the party, you hear, wi hear the whispers of other guests noting your generosity. They seem horrified. Credibility, credibility up, per uh, peril down. You've spent ten liver, liver uh, and have gained a tiny amount of credibility and lost a tiny amount of peril. Of course, we didn't actually have any peril, so whatever. Now let the, na the games begin! Too bad we only get two. Well, I wonder if we can get more, more, because it, it only shows two quarters. Where we can get more turns. Yeah, our money is a bit, a bit on the weak side. Um, so we've got feigned acquaintance. Someone is absolutely bursting at the seams with a desire to discuss something concerning the host but only with those who know the host well. You might not, but when was such a triviality, when has ever, when has such a trivial, triviality ever stopped you? More cheap gossip, possible credibility and peril? Business as usual. A gregarious woman seems to have exactly the sort of rumors you're looking for, but first you'll have to stave off the blundering boasts of a young sugar magnet, magnate. Okay, cheap, shocking, out and outrageous bourgeois, 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 or it's not, bar, it's not bar, bar, bourgeois, it's not, bar, maybe it's bourgeois, I don't know, whatever. Credibility, peril, more gossip, oh, and more gossip, my goodness. Madam Mir, why is there a woman who looks so much? We're gonna have to find out about that one of these days. Appears that the party's host has left their study unlocked. This might be a valuable opportunity to steal. I mean, to find some information with a uh, more unscrupulous nature. Cheap gossip, cheap gossip, cheap gossip. Possible money? Huh. Are we that desperate? Oof. Possible peril. Possible gossip, possible money. I don't know. Hmm. This seems interesting, but we have to try and figure out how to get rid of him. This one seems... We could get some money out of it, and also other types of gossip. 
Pika Pika, and then there's her, and then there's... This is like the e the easy-ish one. Is there any? Yeah, there's a chance of peril with everything. Ah, let's try this. Walking around the party by yourself, you notice a room with a stately desk. It appears to have been left open and unattended. The desk itself is scattered with important looking papers. Perhaps you should skulk around for a moment? Okay. Increase your peril. Hmm, money? Or paper? I think we're gonna go for gossip. And uh, the papers on that desk might lead to some valuable gossip. Close the door behind you to make sure that you can go about your work unobserved, but you're still keenly aware of how it might look for you if you were to caught you were caught doing this. We gained 10 peril. Peril seems to be fairly easy to get rid of though, so. You quickly sift through the papers on the desk, looking for anything that might provide you with a valuable rumor that you could sell to Pierre. Your eyes settle on a half-finished letter to one of the host's confidants. Amidst the usual pleasantries, you read something quite useful. You gain a piece of cheap military gossip. Bringing the details to memory, you also decide what to do next. I'm already here, I might as well steal. No, that's good, let's move on. Oops, just as you finish closing the door behind you, one of the chambermaids rounds the corner and eyes you suspiciously. Okay, we lost uh, credibility. Instead of staying to come up with some outrageous excuse for something they never actually saw you do, you simply leave her behind. Soon you're back among the party proper. Okay. In the vestibule, you hear some strange noises emanating from a coat closet. And whatever could that be? I don't know if I want to find out. Uh, this is that one again. That one again. Oof. Games, a uh, small wager. Games of chance might be illegal, but that doesn't mean they aren't widely enjoyed. After all, if the chance to win or lose great fortunes wasn't dangerous, uh, dangerously thrilling, you, they'd never need to make a law prohibiting it. Hmm. Hmm. That's an interesting thing. I'm still leaning towards the more gossip stuff. Let's go ahead and do this one. See if we can navigate through this conversation. You find yourself in the middle of a conversation with a particularly energetic guest. She flits easily between social circles and has a disarming laugh that seems to make people comfortable enough to just trust her implicitly. Perhaps you can practice such a laugh later. She's currently in the middle of regaling you with a rumor that she's heard over the course of her various daliuses. Uh, it feels likely to be of the cheap sort, but relevant, re relevant to the bourgeois. Bourgeois. Oh-ho! Just as she's about to reach the story's climax, a jerk suddenly enters your conversation. Good afternoon, madams. Allow me to interrupt you for a moment to propose a toast. <laughs> to my sugar importing company. We are having a very successful year, you see. Ah, you'll both be so excited to hear what we plan for the next season, he says, not even waiting for either of you to respond. If this boar keeps talking, you'll never get to hear the end of her story. Um, okay. Ooh, unfortunately, we lost quite a bit of credibility before doing this. I mean, just basically smack him across the face. Uh, I'm so glad to see you in such high spirits. If that's true, you'll love to hear my friend's story. Huh. Ah, uh, yes, where was I? Your, your story com storytelling companion says, trying to remember where she left off. I don't, I don't think that's irrelevant, he says briskly. She and I have spoken earlier. Ah. Without any other options available, you stay and listen to the encroaching entrepreneur's various boasts about his company's success. Damn. 
He is every bit as unbearable as you initially suspected. Sometimes it's awful to be right. Thankfully, you managed to find a way to tactfully excuse yourself and get as far from him as possible. And unfortunately, we... Ooh, that did not go well, did it? We ended up with a little bit of cheap gossip for the military and the bourgeois. Uh, we lost tons of credibility, we lost money, and we gained peril. So not, not exactly the most rousing success, but at least we do have some gossip we can sell in the next episode, because we've actually reached the end of this one. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. We will see you next time.